Episode 007, The Hollow Earth Theory. Have you heard of it? Actually, mm-hmm. you know what? Hold up. First of all, full disclaimer, put your fucking tinfoil hat on because we're going on a fucking ride, bro. Um, Hollow Earth Theory, for the most part, is a fucking hoax. Now, that's not to say that there isn't truth behind the Hollow Earth Theory, though. But we're going to decipher the... We're, we're going to decipher what the hollow earth theory is, what it was, what it currently is now. But it is definitely something on the tinfoil side. So, yeah. Do you know what the, what, do you know what the hollow earth theory is? Uh, I've seen King Kong vs. Godzilla. What is it? <laughs> yeah, King Kong vs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that... Uh, technically, I'm, technically, I yeah. I think I honestly, I haven't even watched the movie. I looked it up on YouTube. Yeah, te- technically, that's to so an no. extent. To an extent, that's kind of what it is. So, if that's the picture that you have in your head, uh, you're not off to a bad start. So, so hollow earth theory is, and well, this conversation is going to go two in into two different paths. First, we're going to see what the stories are behind the hollow earth theory. And then we're going to try to add the science to the theory as well. Mm, okay. And so as we're not we, just going to look it up as a conspiracy shit, huh? No, 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 we're not. But at the same time, we are. Th- that's yeah. part of the story. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's part of the story. So, so we're going to look at it in two different lenses, and then we're going to tie them together, and we'll see what we think at the end of this dialogue. So, first. Let's take some of the truth around this theory, which is that the Earth truly is hollow, or at least has hollow areas, such as caves, um, uh, those water reservoirs underneath the uh, our our crust, um, cenotes, like sen- you know what a cenote is, right? A cenote w- where I you know, I showed you when I jumped off a little cliff. You haven't shown me nothing. Oh, well, You're like me when I travel, I don't show nobody nothing. Uh, and I'm like, oh, fuck. My well, bad, guys. <laughs> well, fuck it. We'll fucking, maybe we'll add yeah. it. So a cenote is. I think we should. I think we should. A, a cenote is a water reservoir that collects water from rainfall and stuff like that. So we're going to try to take some of the truth and reality that revolves around this theory, which is that the earth truly is hollow. Mm-hmm. Just kidding. No, it's not. But it does have hollow areas such as caves, um, Aqua systems, you know, water reservoirs underneath the earth, uh, cha- uh, chambers or channels that uh, once magma and lava carved through that are now dried out, and as well as man-made tunnels and tunnel systems. So that's the first part of the theory that, you know, there is some truth behind it, as well as the story itself. There is some truth behind, or maybe, we'll, we'll figure that out later. And then second, and here is where we put our tinfoil hats on is that and throughout our dialogue we'll kind of uncover the full explanation explanation of what the hollow theory is but the second part of this theory is that and this is the description of hollow earth is that earth as we know it is a shell with walls about 800 miles thick with the polar regions north and south pole um, having holes on each one that are 1400 miles across with edges that curve smoothly from the outside going in. Now, from our perspective, these holes are so massive that if we were to walk into them or fly into them, we would not know the difference as an ant wouldn't know the difference if it's walking on its surface Mm. and then goes in. And, Mm -hmm. And in hollow earth is the most fertile land. It's beautiful, luscious land um, that hasn't been polluted or contaminated. And there's even extinct animals there, dinosaurs, woolly mammoths, and all these type of things. But not only that, hollow earth is also inhabited by an ancient, lost, advanced civilization. Hmm. From, So yeah, put your fucking tinfoil hats because it's, it's a bunch of crazy stories. But again... I personally do believe that there might be some truth behind all of these things. Oh, you know what? Let me show you. Let me show you. First of all, before we get kicked off, uh, um, 
you see that? Is that in Vietnam? That fucking like cave? Is that some? Yes, is that sir. some sort of? Is that some sort of? Uh, I'll send you a video so we can. Or uh, dude, I'll I just, got a picture of it, buddy. Oh, do you? Okay, okay, I perfect, do. perfect. Okay, and yeah. then uh, and we, then all, we will talk about okay, that. Cave. Okay, and then a also, little bit. And then also, um, are you talking about like s- some ancient? Have you seen what's his name? Uh, it's a commander that went to Antarctica or something. Is that Adam or Bird? Adam or Bird. Bird. Yeah. Is that going to come up? A little bit as okay. well. Okay. So in our dialogue, I want to, for the most part, understand what the hollow earth theory is. But I'm telling you, this, this theory has been contaminated by a bunch of fringe theories. It's been contaminated by so much things that to talk about it is like... Is like what the fuck are we even? It's kind of like about? talking about just, aliens it, back in the early two thousands, maybe nineteen yeah. nineties type of thing. But but this is worse. This is oh, this, this is worse. <laughs> this is worse. But again, it's not to say that. I mean, and you know what? Maybe I'm coming at it from a place of ignorance. Maybe I just don't know. Maybe I just haven't seen. Maybe I'm coming at a place from ignorance. But you know, I, like I need <laughs> I need I need evidence. I need evidence to be honest with you. But this is what these guys think that the hollow earth is. And that's what I explained to you, the, the, the parameters. So this is 800 miles thick. These holes are 1,500 mi- or 1,400 miles wide. And, and it's like this. Now, why can't we see it from NASA? Is because there's clouds covering the holes. And why can't we fly over them? Because I'm not sure if you know, but it's restricted airspace flying over Antarctica. And it's... Yeah, I can't remember how yeah. much uh, countries... Are part of the part of Antarctica Treaty, yeah. And then have you you can't fly over the poles, so that's why we can't visit, see, or go to them. You know, this might be a conspiracy, but do you know, uh, I've kind of dove into it, and you know actually why? I I'm not. It, so this guy popped up on on Instagram Reels, and he actually lives and he works, and he kind of was. I like to like how how we're talking about. I like to um, look at things both sides of you. And this guy was debunking. Um, you remember? Do you remember this guy talking about some some that he had all the keys to Antarctica? I think on the Sean Ryan show. Yes. Him. Yes. He debunked him. Mm-hmm. He was trying to debunk him, and he also debunked uh, why uh, like some Antarctica stuff like that you can actually visit. It's just like it's just. Super. If you if it's just it's just you don't know what you're gonna go on. Super hard, yeah, yeah. Super hard, and you need different equipment. So, so he gives it a different aspect, and that's what I like because sometimes you 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 obviously need two two sides on on this. And uh, he works there, and he's like, yeah, I have all the keys. Look, he's like, yeah, yeah I have all the keys. Uh, this isn't true. This not what now it is. Am I believing him? No, I have to believe both. You know, I have to, you know, be aware of both sides, but. Uh, it was interesting kind of like going through his stuff. It's pretty cool. I had now, if you were to tell me what's his name, I cannot remember, but if I do find it, I'll just pop up a, a little picture of his profile. Yeah, I did. I did actually see that. And not only that, but Antarctica is covered with three miles of fucking ice, dude. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but these eyes form cracks in them and holes that if you're just fucking, it doesn't, just it doesn't look like it from the top, but if you're just cruising along that fucking uh, ice, you can literally fall to your fucking death, possibly fucking three miles down. Yep. Yeah. And there's actually a, maybe we can find this too. There's actually a video, video. going on, on on social media of a guy skiing through yeah. there. I'll find it. And, I'll find it as you And talk. he fucking fall. He almost falls in the, in the hole and then he ends up self-rescuing him his way out of that. Yeah, see that that th- that stuff is crazy, and, it, and when we talk about all these things, it's very hard to not look at it from that perspective of the terrain. Mm-hmm. And it's very easy for us because sitting in a in, you know seventy degree weather, you know house and stuff, it's very easy for us to not understand how actually difficult terrain is. Whether you're going into the Amazon, a desert, you know, any mm-hmm. Arctic, uh, you know, North South Pole. So it's like it's very hard for us to comprehend until we get there. You yeah, know? exactly. And, I don't know. That's why I like my field of work because I can go out there and I'm like, you know, people give me, oh, what to what to do. And it's a wooded area. And I'm like, until you go there, you're not going to know it's a shit show. Mm-hmm. So. 
Yeah, and that's yeah. So that's also one of the reasons why we don't really visit Antarctica a lot. And Antarctica will come up a little bit more in the conversation. But this is did I already mention? Yeah, this this yep, is what you mentioned. What it mentioned. Is, yeah. Uh, so let's see. So okay. So yeah, that's kind of the both both parts of this theory that it and and the hollow earth theory started off as uh as just like um as uh it was scientifically theorized and the hollow earth theory was first scientifically theorized by Edmund, uh by Edmund Haley the very same Edmund Haley that discovered um Haley's comet oh yeah. shoot so in ah. yeah in 1992 let me take this picture down in 1992, he proposed an idea that accounted for strange compass readings, postulating that the Earth is composed of concentric spherical shells, each spinning counter to the others and is surrounded by a solid core. And so at this time, Edmund Haley was getting uh, weird compass readings from his compass and he was like, what the fuck is going on with this shit? So he dove into it and he brought up this theory mm -hmm. and it, it's based off of his magnetic field readings and Haley's understanding of the sun's and moon's gravitational pull on the earth. Additionally, he hypothesized that there may have been light atmospheric shells in between these concentric spheres that could possibly support life. Okay. Now, over now, this was first in the 1600s, in the late 1600s, Jeez. and and over the centuries, uh, people just built upon the conception upon this conception, replacing the collection of layers with the Earth being hollow. Thus, the hollow Earth theory was born. Okay, cool. I did not and, know about that. Yeah, and this is what technically what Edmund Haley was was kind of talking about that this is the outer layer there may have possibly been uh, at atmosphere uh, like gaps of atmospheric shells in between all these different layers and then in the very center there was uh there was the core of the earth okay now <clears throat> now let me go through a a very let me go through a mini timeline and we're kind of going to go over kind of how things escalated to what it is now. So in the 16th, 17th, 17th century, Edmund Haley proposed his centric layer theory. In the 18th century, mathematician Leonard Euler proposed a single shell hollow earth theory instead of the concentric circles or concentric uh, spheres. There was just one solid one solid core. This uh, mathematician proposed it. However, people think that I I could not find where his published papers at about this theory. So this might be unfactual. Okay. At least to the extent that okay. my research went. In the 19th century, Journey to the Center of the Earth was published, well, which was a very popular book, and it made headlines all over the world because it was very popular. They also, they <clears throat> also made a movie about it, right? Yeah, they made uh, a series of movies. Okay. Now, the 20th century, there was a, a frenzy of, inform of information regarding skeletons with giant heads, um, UFOs entering mountains, and UFOs entering in and out of the ocean and stuff like that. There was a frenzy of, of, of stories just going on all over the place. I think this was when a bunch of these stories just started fitting into place. And now we're in the 21st century. We have the internet, thus uh, even more exponential of this hollow earth theory. The thing is that behind these theories, there's a cult-like fan base, if you will, surrounding these, that they're diehard believers in this in in these theories mm -hmm. but i will say that the hollow earth theory is a little bit more plausible than the fucking flat earth theory which we'll get into <laughs> it at another point but at least there's a little bit of truth behind this one flat earth theory again maybe i'm just ignorant but it's a bunch of rubbish mate i mean 
I'll be mad as fuck when I get on the Blue Origin for a passenger and I fucking see that shit fly. I'd be mad. I'd probably kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time I will. <laughs> no, yeah, imagine we society, fucking though. believe all this shit. And I know. Then and then we next year we're like, oh, fuck, fuck me. <laughs> so, yeah. So, now. So, we kind of seen where the hollow earth theory started it started off as an actual scientific hypothesis and now our tinfoil hats come on on what the hollow earth theory kind of is now or at least the mainstream version of what the hollow earth theory is and the story goes that in ancient times there was two very advanced civilizations one was lemuria and the other atlantis and the, the the Lemurian civilization was a very peaceful and prosperous civilization. And the Atlanteans at the time, also very advanced, wanted to rule the world. Thus, conflict and war ensued. Eventually, the war between these two powerhouses uh, left the world inhabitable. And thus, the survivors of the war fled to the hollow earth. And vowing to never again pursue power and world domination. Mm. These survivors, these remnant civilizations, called this new land Agartha. And the side note, we can make just episodes on stories revolving uh, the Hollow Earth theory. Oh. Such as... There's that much... There's so much stories that cluttered this theory. Now... As time heals all wounds, the surface once again was able to birth life and the world and history as we know it would come to be. All in the meanwhile, the people of Agartha continued to prosper in the center of the earth for thousands of years with no conflict, leaving the outside world to develop on their own, never interfering with our conflicts. Additionally, this is where people think that aliens are from is that instead of aliens being from somewhere from another planet. planet, they're actually from within our own planet. And it, you know, there is, it, it is kind of fun to think about, even though th these theories might be a little crazy, but as we know it out of our observable universe, and I know we're looking at old information, but as we know it, life as we know it, we don't know that life exists. How How could we know that? life will evolve similarly or at least humanoids to what to what it evolved here you get me yeah yeah now do you know what have you ever heard about the lemurian civilization i have not heard of none of this you're talking about which by the way uh did, does this have a timeline or does this like uh not timeline but does this have like a time day or something or it's just <laughs> this is the thing with this story and why I think it's a bunch of rubbish. Because Atlantis, we know, was a global... Okay, so now the story of Atlantis will get its own podcast episode. But the story of Atlantis is most likely factual. And it would have been an advanced civilization that was striving before, um, before the... Fuck, what's it called? The... The Younger Dryas. It was a civilization that was thriving before the Younger Dryas. The Younger Dryas fucking made the impact. And uh, it flooded everything. Thus, Atlantis, which was on a sea, uh, it ended up flooding. Mm -hmm. Now, people, th there's different stories. Some stories is that this happened long ago, hundreds of thousands of years ago. And this event is what... It was the first event that caused the dinosaurs to be, go extinct because of all the nuclear war. But then Atlantis itself didn't, we don't think it, it, it went away until after the Younger Dryas. So that was around the 13,000 yeah, year yeah, mark. Yeah. And of course we know about the story of Atlantis because of um, uh, Plato, which mm. is uncle went to, uncle or a relative went to Egypt, Egypt and learned yep. about them with the Egyptian priests. So a timeline is kind of a waste of time, to be honest with you, because this is more of a story. Again, I, I personally think what the hollow earth theory is now is a bunch of rubbish. 
but maybe I'm just stupid, which I am. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, not a lot of people know about the Lemurian civilization. And Lemuria existed, um, or sorry, Lemuria is hypothesized as a now sunken lost continent. And the existence of it could actually very well be a reality because of a zoologist by the name of Philip Sclater. He noticed that there was mammal fauna specific to Madagascar that was found in India and Australia. And as we know it, Lemurians are exclusively uh, animals that reside in Madagascar. Now, lemurs? Yeah, lemurs. Now, we're not going to dive into Lemuria, Atlantis, and all this stuff. Again, we just kind of want to get a generalized theory of the stories revolving this and just kind of get an understanding of the Hollow Earth theory. But let me show you about the possibility of Lemuria, though. So this is Madagascar here, and there's mammal fauna in Australia and India about of lemurs. And a zoologist, like I said, figured this out, and he proposed a theory that there was once a land bridge or a lost continent that united all of these different uh, land masses. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have, and that's why we have um, lemurs in these areas. And... I believe that there is a sunken landmass somewhere in this in this region. Okay. Um, again, I didn't want to dive too much into it because I didn't want to go off this hollow earth theory. But it is j just as a side note to kind of just get it into your head. And not only that about this possible lost landmass, but we know at some point when Pangaea was around that all these landmasses were connected. Now were there thriving now were lemurs thriving back then as they were now because now we're talking about millions of years you know where mm. wh where it was Pangaea so th that's another side note that I was just kind of thinking to myself but this is the tinfoil hat right here this is what they believe the hollow earth is which is again the sphere outside inside is Agartha and the clouds cover these holes and we're not able to go into Antarctica. And in here lives the survivors of Atlantis and Lemuria. Mm. Bunch of mm. rubbish. But, dude, we can go so deep into how all these things came about. Came about, but, dude, I tell you, this podcast would be fucking 24 hours long. <laughs> Now, could there very well be a hollow earth as this is proposed? Well, a guy by the name of Admiral Byrd says it is. Now, Admiral, Admiral Richard E. Byrd is a decorated U.S. naval officer as well as an explorer. He's been on several secret missions. He's been on several expeditions to explore earth as we know it. Apparently, he was the first one to fly over the North Pole, and apparently, he was the first one to fly over the South Pole as well. So, basically, he wasn't a guy that fucked around. He was not a guy that fucked around, and he's he's a real person. Is this guy right here. There's statues of him all over the place, too. There's monuments in his name all over the place. Hello. I think there's a statue of him in New Zealand and in other areas around the world, too. Now... Go ahead. Uh, are you gonna bring up his diary? Man, shut the fuck up. That's where we're going, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. So, this fucking guy. Yeah, you know, let me just look so we can take yeah, a look at it. Yeah. Now, um, this fucking guy. This is my Admiral Bird. Now, this fucking guy was a fucking G, bro. He went all over the world. He was in World War. And, <laughs> and he even received the Medal of Honor. Now, 
Again, as I noticed, he was part of various explorations and top secret missions. His story could, again, very well be its own episode mm -hmm. of just diving into everything revolving his story and his life and everything because this guy is, is, is amazing, bro. But one of his more, notice, more notably uh, operations was Operation High Jump. Again, another theory that can we can just go into it. But Operation, Operation High Jump was set in motion during the Cold War era. Keep in mind the mentality that was going around the Cold War era. You had McCarthyism. You had all these people being accused of, of communists. Mm -hmm. People were scared at this time. And they were scared that the Russians were going to attack the U.S. over the North Pole. So they set out on a secret mission to, uh, to train in cold climates. So they went to Antarctica to, again, exercise, set missions, train in cold climates away from where Russia could possibly see them. That's one side of it. The other side of Operation High Jump is that it was secretly a secret mission within a secret mission that they would go to Antarctica to find remnants of Nazi bases because, as we know, Hitler did visit Antarctica mm -hmm. with a very large expedition over there. And this theory says that some of the Nazis that fled the World War II, they fled to the Hollow Earth as well. Again, tinfoil hat on. Now, around these expeditions, Admiral Byrd flew over Antarctica. And as he was flying over the South Pole, his, 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 uh, his airplane instruments started failing and malfunctioning. Not knowing where he was, he continues to fly. When he starts to notice mountains and vegetations that are lush instead of cold and snow, he also sees a woolly mammoth. And this is all noted down in detail in his diary, his missing diary, which you brought up a little earlier. Now, he, he takes account of everything, like where he's going, what his instruments are reading, um, what elevation he's at, what he's looking at. He first thinks it's an elephant, and then he's like, nah, that's a fucking woolly mammoth. And then he starts to hear voices on his radio, thinking that it's his base, talking to him, wondering where the fuck he's at. But no, they're Nordic voices or with a German accent. At the time where he doesn't know where the fuck he's at, he's in what he thought was Antarctica, filled with snow and ice and all this stuff, but there's green all around him. Two flying objects that can only be described as flying saucers come up to him with swastikas on these flying saucers. Now, there's another theory that suggests that the Nazis had flying saucers or they were trying to develop something around this time. Again, for another time. But he ends up, they end up telling him to land and he ends up landing and makes communication with, with these people. He not only makes communication with, um, sir, with people that fled the Nazi military, but he also comes into contact with, the survivors with the people from Agartha, with the survivors of Atlantis and Lemuria. And then eventually they let him go and he comes back to base. But the crazy thing about all this thing is in my research about this missing diary, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. The diary does not exist. Which makes me to believe where the fuck does this story come from? The only thing that I can find about this is that the is a book about the missing diary. The diary itself does not exist. And the diary didn't even come out until he died. This guy passed away. Then his family gave his belongings to, I think it was the Ohio Institute. They're, because he was a very prominent Arctic explorer and stuff like this. So they gave all his belongings to the Institute and then thus came this diary. So as fascinating this story is, who the fuck knows? First of all, Admiral Bird never talked, never really talked about it when he was alive. And this story came out when after. He, after they discovered this stuff. This is why I think it's a fucking hoax. There's zero shreds of evidence. 
Now his flight logs and then all these things are recorded though, and there was a missing period where he where nobody knew where the fuck he was at. So only he knows. <laughs> he took that <clears throat> to his grave. Dang. But imagine if it was true. It could because, very it could very well be because true. Because then I think I remember like what the diary said is that he went and there was bases and there was he came in contact with beings and I now, think actual people when I could be wrong. But. Now the actual beings that are believed to live in the hollow earth, they have a name. These beings are called Pleiadins. Pleiadins very much well look like an Aryan race. If you remember, Hitler was f- fascinated with a certain, by looking a specific way, uh, l- white skin, blonde hair, blue eyes. And he made an entire religion based off of this belief that these are the only pe- that these are the superior people. And these people are believed to actually exist by this community. They look something like this, but they're very good looking people, male, females with blonde hair, very, uh, very, uh, very pretty looking people. Dude, these, 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 these Pleiadians are going to have their own episode because they might be real. Not only might they be real, the CIA has files of people like this. Now, these people are very spiritual. They're enlightened beings. They're very peaceful. Again, these are the lost. These are the remnants of a lost ancient civilization. And the CIA does have files regarding these people. Hmm. Um, My fucking guy from the Danny Jones podcast, Concrete Podcast, he brought on a guest that communicates to these people and... It it can sound like a fucking hoax, but he made a pretty good case about it. That they that they were visiting him and they tell him about uh, the same message that we hear about. P- mm-hmm. We need peace. We need. We can't go into another war, um, another world war. The, the same peaceful message. And once he came out with this, this guy he 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 was contacted by the fbi and the oh, cia shit. and all this sh- yeah it's Damn, that kind of gives me chills yeah so these pe- these people could very well be true I, it, have you seen those uh those reels i sent you about this one lady she kind of seems kooky but like she talks about all these different spiritual beings yeah from gaia and she yeah and yeah and i'm like Obviously, it's interesting, like the stuff, and I'm like, bro, she seems fucking confident about this. Oh yeah, yeah. These so now you gotta remember these type of people are this. They come from this. The serious art is actually the closest, and then the center. And I'm like, how the fuck this lady? Yeah, uh, I have a lot of clients that you know. And I'm like, I mean, it is. It's it's, kooky as fuck. It's kooky as fuck. But like, could it be true? You know, it's just like. The the thing the thing that really intrigues me into this is that the CIA and the FBI know that these beings exist. Now, are we getting into a far fetched conversation that about the fucking that there's a galactic order and there's these alien species all over the place? There's graves, there's Pleiadins, there's mm-hmm. uh, still Lemurians and still Atlanteans because. The Lemurian civilization is believed to have migrated so that you have un- a united people of both species that went into the hollow earth. And then you have just Lemurians that went into hiding into Mount Chasta, and that's where they <laughs> reside in. And then you have a, just an Atlantean civilization that still exists somewhere in the world. And could it be that there's that they do exist or something like that, but... That just fucking sounds like a bunch of fucking rubbish to me. I I would love to believe these stories are very fascinating. But what does fascinate me is that the CIA and the FBI do know that these beings exist. They have files on them. This guy has seen him with his own eyes. His I don't know. It's it's a rabbit hole for sure. But again, it just might have yeah, to be for another yeah. episode. But I can't remember what the podcast was. One of his most recent ones. I think I on know which Daniel one you Jones. are because I first started looking 
at Danny Jones because of you, obviously. And uh, I've been listening to one of his first podcasts, and that one intrigued me because, yeah. Yeah, it's it's very fascinating story. But again, I do understand that we might sell my kooks. But I think that's that's a good part of it, though. Like, we have to take everything in consideration, but also understand that, you know. <laughs> it's might be a bunch of yeah. rubbish. Yep, yep. Now, any questions about any of this stuff? Any theories, anything like that? Um, questions about the people, about Admiral Bird? No, um... But have you seen have you seen that lady that I sent you? I have, yeah. What I have. Seen, what do you think about when I what do you think about when I send you that? Dude. You're like, do you actually like? Are you like, bro? What the fuck? My, my, my brother's just sending me some bullshit. No, or do so you actually, Gaia right here. They're an actual. They have a they have a YouTube channel. And they have their own website. They speak about all this crazy stuff. And uh, our last podcast, they speak about that there is more than one Ark of the Covenant. That the Ark of the Covenant was a generator for the Great Pyramid of Giza, and that was a power source that allowed them to emit some sort of energy. They speak about a bunch of rubbish. You know, uh, it's the same fucking thing with Billy Carson. Everything that Billy Carson says, rubbish. <laughs> Where he unites his different stories and all this stuff, I I would love to believe that because you're connecting one piece of a puzzle with another piece of the puzzle and they're the same stories, just different names. It makes sense to me. It truly does make sense to me. But when you start to really dive into the possibilities of all these different stories and the same thing with uh, Eric Van Donegan, he is the, Eric Van Donegan is the grandfather of ancient astronaut theories, theorists of that, that gods are actually astronauts from another world and they came here and the story of the of the the biblical story the old testaments and the anunnaki that they're the that they're gods but they're actually aliens ancient mm -hmm. astronaut theories and all these stories when you tie them together make sense and they all intertwine almost perfectly but but it's we need more than connections and of of stories yeah, yeah. that are kind of just fables to be honest with you and that is that actually lined in so good with what i just told you about the lecture podcast with yuval yuval was like what drives us what connects us what keeps us is just stories fiction he says fiction fiction it's just stories that's why we start wars that's why we do this that's why we do that that's why it drives to this it's literally just fiction and I didn't understand it until you kind of get, you know, deep. What happens to that issue? What happens to that? What happens? Well, that's just, mm -hmm. it's just fishing, you know? So it, 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 it literally lines up to just the podcast that I listen to. And yeah. that good histor historian and philosopher. It really does. Now, I'm not to say that, you know, they're wrong because again, yeah, maybe, maybe they're, it's maybe they're real. It's, it's Billy Carson sounds very convincing when he talks about that. Eric Van Donegan, they they both have books relating to their to their uh, hypothesis or to their theories, uh, which very they they have very good books. But again, you know, as much as I would love to believe in these stories, I'm gonna need a little bit of evidence. How about uh, making that up? How about uh, Zachariah Sitchin too? Same thing with uh, but he kind of deciphers the translation of the Anunnaki tablets, of mm -hmm. the ancient Sumerian tablets. Mm -hmm. He deciphers them and and translates and gives us the story of what that is. But what's crazy to me is that that story of the Sumerian tablets, that's, those tablets are what, like fucking four to 6,000 years old. So that story is from the dawn of what we call modern civilization of the spark of civilizations, you know, we have an episode about that, but that's where the story, that's, that's what we can date it back to. That story was easily 10, probably 10,000 years yep. ago until the fall, until the, the, the great flood, until the younger dryest impact. So that story is basically what the old Testament is almost 
basically the story of Noah, the story of Adam and Eve. Um, it's almost a exact copy of it. 3,000 years earlier. That's what's very fascinating about that. And he tells uh, he tells a translation of those tablets. Eric Van Donegan and Billy Carson just speak about a bunch of rubbish, to be honest with you. My personal belief, I look at both of their content fucking 24-7 because I'm very fascinated with, with their theories, but I can't yet give them credibility personally now my favorite part about this conversation the science behind the hollow earth theory could it very well be possible so although the hollow earth theory has been taken over by french theories and theories with no evidence i truly do believe that there is some truth behind all of this and as we first seen with Edmund Haley I think he was onto something because his initial hypothesis about the concentric spheres in um, in the 1700s was very close to what we would later discover and in the later in our most recent discoveries and particularly in 1909 the earth mantles were discovered by Andrija Mohorovicic, something like that. Um, and she was a seismologist um, that was studying how seismic how seismic waves travel faster in certain areas than in others through the Earth's crust, and seismology was itself was invent was invented in the 1880s. So she discovered that Earth has mantles. Um, in 1929, in 1929, a large earthquake occurred near New Zealand as a Danish seismologist or seismologist, Inge Lehman, studied the shockwaves. She ended up detecting Earth's cores. Thus, she discovered Earth's core. So now we have Earth's mantles, different layers, and Earth's cores discovery. And in the 1980s, we discovered two continent-sized blobs of unusual material, one beneath the African continent, the other beneath the Pacific Oceans. Two, right, in the, right in the spot. Two enormous blobs of unknown material. I'll show you this picture, but let me get this. Let me get through this first. And... There is a possibility of how we know what of what we know these things are, but this is you've seen the Earth's mantle and the crust and how it looks, right? Yeah. In, back in school. This is what we discovered not too long ago. Is that this is how it really looks. This is uh again, we learned this through seismology, but there's two blobs Damn, that's dope. <laughs> of 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 a big landmass that we don't really know what it is. Now, now, they both have a pretty good difference to what they are. So we think that they both occurred at different moments and times. Now, what these blobs are, they're mass, they're rock their rock formations but as we noted earlier they could house gaps of and how edmund hayne they could house gaps of of they could house enormous gaps that could possibly sustain life and this is where this is now this is just a complete connection this is what i'm about to say is complete rubbish as well is that edmund haley thought that there was gaps in earth's mantles that could house um, that could house life. And these things are so massive. You know how massive these blobs are? I mean, they might fairly look massive. If oh. they were if they were to exist on Earth's surface, the International Space Station could not make an orbit around Earth. What? It would collide into these massive fucking things. It, say that again. So, if okay. these blobs that exist in Earth's mantle, 
if they were to reside on the surface of Earth, so instead uh, of the inside, if they were okay. to reside on the surface, the International Space Station could not make an orbit around Earth as it would collide into these enormous, mysterious mountains of rock within our Earth. And again, we discovered these through, uh, si- through uh, seismic waves going through the Earth. Now, wouldn't that just add... I mean, I, I don't know how it would be, but wouldn't that, wouldn't Earth's uh, orbit would be even higher though, you know, or no? Uh, but that was just a reference, I guess. It, no, I guess, it's, yeah. it's, it's just a reference. Okay, okay. Yeah, that, that's just a okay. reference. Now, now these, it's it's very well believed that these have something very important to do with volcanic activity and how the tectonic plates, how they react, but... One theory as to how, so one is a lot larger and one is a lot taller. One's wider and one's taller. So which indicates that these two blobs occurred at different times or occurred with different methods. One of the methods of how these blobs occurred is um, the moon impact theory. Do you know what the moon impact theory is? The moon impact theory is an object similar to around the mass of Mars, around the size of Mars, collided with Earth. A chunk flew off. Thus, we have our moon and part of that of that uh, remaining mass or matter uh, was just ended up forming here. And we might think this because the same contents on the moon is found in the areas that these are that these are aligned with now the other one is believed to have formed with when the earth was had a pangea continent the tectonic plates you remember how tectonic plates were like yep they yeah. reside and and then that's new, how it creates old the surface rock goes in and new rock comes out it pushes it yeah yeah and that's how the other one is believed to have exist. And oh, look, I I did have a picture of yeah, ma- ma- uh, crust being pushed down, more being pushed up. Now, why does this tie into Hollow Earth? I am tying it into Hollow Earth because there... you are tying it in, or it's tied in. No, I'm tying it in. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm tying it. In. I, you know, I actually don't think I've ever heard any similarities between what I'm about to say. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I didn't look at it somewhere. Now, I am tying it into Hollow Earth because, first of all, they're unknown. We don't know what they are. We think that they might be layered of rock, layered upon another. Again, if this comes out to be true, then rock being upon layered another, this could create chambers that we would then have access to. Now, in Hollow Earth, they say that there's not only is the entrances through the North and South Poles, but there's actually tunnels leading into them. And these blobs, these blobs have patterns reaching, reaching all the way to the surface of the Earth. So the, they're called LOSVPs. They're, there is, it means something, but I forgot what it means. And it has branches and cusp leading all the way to the surface. Now, could this very well be uh, just volcanic activity? Like through these chambers, it pushes Manta all the way to the surface. I don't know. Again, uh, what I'm saying is just complete rubbish. Or tying it to hollow earth is complete rubbish, but I'm just trying to add some of the science to all these fucking fringe theories. Which, by the way, I just looked it up. Uh, LOSVPs are... Large, low, sheer velocity provinces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, provinces, uh, <clears throat> areas of, of rock, of mass. This is what... That's dope. Yeah, this this is what um, it looks like through seismic graphing and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Things that I'm too dumb to explain. But you know it's how... It's kind of just like a... Yeah, like a LiDAR scan, like a 3D scan where you can, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of common sense. Mm-hmm. You have a point where you throw uh, seismic waves, kind of like echolocation. You throw the wave and it, you're Bounces able to detect to- and you're able to detect it, something like this. And again, this is how we know the Earth is not hollow. Or at least to what the tinfoil theory 
things. We know it's not hollow. We have technology that we fucking developed in the fucking 1880s that, <laughs> 1980s, sorry, that, so I don't know. Again, maybe I'm just dumb. I mean, that is how we find, uh, how we know, like how a pond or a lake is. Like in surveying, we use uh, hydrology, and um, we just let's say this is this is the this is the water. We just take our little boat with our rover, and it just sends waves, oh, it's waves down, and then it creates this thing. Creates, that's how we do it in surveying. So it's yeah. the same. Yes. I mean, I understand yes. it. Similar technology, yeah. Now, again, <clears throat> I have not heard anybody attach this theory to hollow Earth. I don't think so. I think I might have came up with this. But I want to bring this up to you because it's going to come up later in our conclusion of what I truly think and the and how we can connect this theory to possibly reality. But before we reach our conclusion, I want to go over things that could very well possibly give credit towards um, Hollow Earth Theory, which as you were talking earlier the cave in vietnam this cave is so fucking massive that you can fit the empire state building into it yep and it's eight miles long it's i don't know how long I it is i think it was eight miles i could be wrong but you know what? i actually have uh the whole cave passage that's fucking enormous bro and it's crazy yeah and you have and then you have two different and it was only discovered not too long ago i believe you're right I think I heard um I think I heard on the on JRE somebody talking about it that you're you're like it has its own in, ecosystem. It does it has its own, yeah. has its own ecosystem and it, has lakes and shit. Yeah. And like now <laughs> this is so massive as you just pointed out that it has its own ecosystems. Not only that, to get to these areas you have to go through complete darkness for if I'm not mistaken, for days, like one or two days, you're in complete darkness just going through a cave and then you reach these areas. If if you were to reach these areas through the cave system. Now, this is... I brought this up because this could be a form of how the, uh, the of how the hollow earth theory exists. This is so massive that a fucking modern building can fit into it. What if there is multiple areas like these with vegetation? This has, this has fresh water into it with vegetation, with maybe animals that make this a habitat i would if i was an animal i'd, I'd reside into something like this there's water there's shelter what's well, crazy how those those little triangle things are those are tents yeah these little things are tents and not only that there's a underground river that passed through this now how i i mentioned a cenote earlier a cenote is is again a reservoir from water and it collects fresh water on the top and it's connected via tunnel systems that it itself carves out with salt water. And then at the very bottom, it deposits its salt water contents through uh, to the ocean. Now, there's currents existing underneath this. There's very fast currents. And the cenota that I jumped into it, the, the guy told me that it was 60 feet deep. <laughs> 60 feet deep. And then it connects with other cenotes, with other freshwater cenotes. And then even deeper at the very bottom, it connects with the salt water, with the ocean, and it deposits all the contents out. That's just crazy. Uh, I've also heard stories where, like, they go scuba diving into, like, lower, and then they yeah. go into, like, a cave type, and then they go even super weird to understand, yeah, there's, at least for me. Yeah, there's, yeah, you can go, yeah. there's water underwater. There's, ca there's cave diving, yeah. you know, there's cave, or cave scuba, scuba diving. But this is kind of how I explained to you, the cenote. You jump into it for all fresh water, all fresh water, and then it connects down here with salt water and exits to the ocean. Mm. But this this place is called. Um, do you remember the name of this place? It's. Um, I don't know, but uh, it's on the, one of my top of the list to go visit it. Let's fucking go, bro. Oh, it is called. Hang Son Dung in Vietnam. Yeah, Hang Son Dung in Vietnam. That's the what the cave system is called, bro. Look at this. You think you need a permit to go there? I I think I would think so because the caves are fucking dangerous, bro. I would think. You think so. you need a hard hat? I would think so as well. 
fuck that am I going to <laughs> nah just kidding yeah I think so as well bro fucking massive mate now another thing is how these systems work again so first you have areas at least we know of at least one area that has its own ecosystem and vegetation fresh water runs through these areas uh and like this is what you were saying like you have a river and you dive and then you go into a cave and then there's a bunch of other shit and we have deposits of hollow areas in the earth this is this is this is why i'm talking to all this stuff i'm trying to connect the reality yeah. with yep. Yep. with fairy tales and and then we have the conversation of and then we have the conversation of of ancient myths like the ancient like the, like the myth of a flood that almost every civilized ancient civilization on the planet has they have a myth of ancient of an ancient flood they almost all have myths of ancient of of hollow systems in earth if you're religious you know it as hell the underworld um underworld is what the greek knows it where haiti resides um the native american people here in america and the indigenous people in in mesoamerica believe that the entrance to these areas are through cave systems um again you have all these connections that could implement the reality of a hollow earth civilization now the rubbish description of it i don't believe in that one bit not even one bit but i do believe that there could possibly well be a origin of where all this comes from not necessarily with agartha and all this rubbish that we were talking about but with the reality that all ancient stories come with some truth behind all this stuff and all these stories come with some truth behind of it and through that i think that hollow earth theory could possibly well be a thing maybe there's is some ancient civilization that we don't know are they advanced who knows but yeah oh then we you know here in the united states we have the largest caves the largest cave in the world oh shit it's called mammoth cave in brownsville kentucky it's 405 miles long. Oh, shit. You know in, uh, you know in northeast, northeast Iowa, there's a lot of caves up there? Is there? Yeah, a lot of caves. I did not know that. Yeah, I had a coworker that he even went for like his birthday just to... And then when I would go to Wisconsin and stuff, when I would go to Wisconsin, uh, you pass these... You just pass these signs that just say oh not you know the state cave or state park type of thing mm -hmm. pretty cool pretty pretty dope all right now we got all this information now let's wrap it up and conclude with something what do you think do you think the hollow earth could very well exist does it exist what's your personal opinion about all this stuff I think that it, um, like you said, I think there's some truth to it. Um, I think there's some truth to something because where does it arrive from? You know, where does it arise from? I, I know that, you know, there's there's a lot of stories and and movies made up or about this, and that's very creative, you know, thinking. But it has to all arise from something, you know. I, I like my one of my you know favorite people george lucas he comes up with in indiana jones and he all he all where does that come from it comes from actually kind of stories that could be true or could have been true or are true uh you know star wars back in the day were just kind of made up shit but now it's like we can almost you know there that that could you know happen somehow now the hollow earth I don't know. I I seem to be on the edge of more believing it when I look into the actual, like, you know, in, into what we have and what we found out. 
you know, maybe there's like a underground type of cave. But now, do I believe in there being like civilizations and and animals and all that stuff? I I don't know. I I don't I don't believe in that. Just because I don't know. I just don't. You know, but it also it's it's also weird because I'm pretty sure you've seen those those some type of orbs or UFOs that just go straight into the ocean too, though. So could that be a cave system too? You know, I'm mean, you know mm-hmm. I, we also don't know what that is. All all of this, I do think that there is a possibility for it. I I'm not skeptical about it. I do think there's a possibility, and evidences or or you know sh- show. That it could be possibly, and that's what I like. But you also gotta, you know, come back to reality and what we what, what we know and what's possible. Yeah, yeah. I think I would kind of agree with you as well. I, a hundred percent, I'm I'm skeptic of what the that there's a thick crust just because technology already debunks that. Now, there's a bunch of people that that have stories that I think are rubbish that talk about it being a hollow earth. And some people even claim to visit it. Um, some people claim that they have a relative that's visited. So you have all these stories that oh, don't mean to offend them, but I think it's rubbish, you know, or seismic activities is pretty spot on technology to understand what we have in earth's mantle. But I do believe that there could very well be habitable deposits in Earth's crust that that can tie back to or that can give it a little that can give this hollow earth theory a little bit of justice. Now, as we just seen, we have these blobs that have systems that reach all the way to the surface. And could it very well be that those are now able to be inhabited or maybe that they are inhabited? Mm-hmm. Um, we know that us as humans have had capabilities to dig very deep, livable systems. There's um, Graham Hancock talks about this this um, underground civilization, and he thinks that there um, were an ancient civilization that it's it's very. Have you ever have you have you not seen this? Uh, no, Under- I don't think so. Ground. Sit, yeah, yeah, Darren Kuyu. I think you had you do know this. Yeah, over in Darren Kuyu, Graham Hancock talks about um whatever it is. Just send me. Yeah, I got okay. it right here. Yeah, over in Darren oh, Kuyu, there's yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. there's an underground yeah uh, an underground city. Ah. Now Graham Hancock is a little bit on the how the fuck did they construct this? However, Milo Ross. Uh, fucking love his content, bro. He debunks Graham Hancock, to be honest with you. A lot of... Which is good, like I said. That's, yeah, that's, that's Graham that's Hancock. Perfect. That's what theories. we need. We need two sides. Yeah, he, he debunks a lot of it and with very good points. It This is soft rock. It, this is very soft rock. It's very easily able to be achieved. Now this, I don't know when it was uncovered. I don't know. Yeah, this housed 20,000 people. Now, this was in ancient times. So, could an ancient civilization be living underground and stuff like that? Again, very possible. Very possible. So, when we tie into that, so when we tie into into these things like this, I think that the story could very well be true in as far as deposits in earth that can have ha, can have life like cenotes the fresh water systems the water is continuously able to move which prevents from bacteria um you know thriving in or bad bacteria thriving in the area and when we when we when we talk about it like that yeah i think i think uh i think i even think an ancient civilization can still thrive if they have food source the water sources are plentiful in systems like this, um, as we've seen in in uh, Hang Song Dong cave system, it's enormous. It's it's enormous. Where I don't see it far fetched to say that there's areas like that that we haven't uncovered that it can reside like that. 
where who knows maybe fucking the aliens that fucking dive into the ocean go in a cave system that then takes them to something like that yeah I, there's a lot of possibilities yeah know, and and some some fucking uh some theorists think that in the biblical story of Eden or the ancient Sumerian tablets that they were not banished from Eden in the surface, but Eden was some place in the hollow earth hmm. and they were banished to the surface. Hmm. This is, is not, not a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the only thing that ruins all this is just like a um, bunch of people making shit up. That's what mm -hmm. ruins it. And that's where you go where, you know, it goes back to, it goes back to, crop circles it goes back to ufos everyone making stuff up whether it's for its own gain or whether it's to be a headline somewhere or whether it's for something mm -hmm. just for self just self um self gain and that's why all this stuff kind of is, you know some tinfoil shit yeah. but when you like i think everything can be tinfoil unless you actually look into it and understand yeah which is which is why i try to tie science as much as i can to this For sure. because yeah, in a good. in a topic that is fucking tinfoil area i want to tie some truth to it of a possibility of it truly have been of it truly existing who knows maybe in one of these blobs it's all carved out by an ancient civilization with super advanced technology maybe one the, of these blobs. maybe the ancient civilization doesn't need food <laughs> We do know for a fact that some life forms on our planet don't need the sun to live because that used to be a thing that, oh, all life needs sun. Well, no, we have, we have, um, we have life forms in deep into our oceans where sunlight can't reach that thrive off of the volcanic activity that in the minerals that it emits, they thrive off of that. Very well could be that more then one types of life forms evolved a different way on our planet. All oh, interesting stuff. For sure. But that's all I got for today. It's a good one. I like this one. Yeah, it's very it's interesting. This one's very interesting. Uh, we could, I'm telling you, there's so much great stories revolving this. Maybe we can have a podcast about just storytelling, just yeah. tell stories. That's probably on the X series. Oh, yeah. So, but that's all I got. Intellects episode 007, the hollow earth theory. Until Thank the next time. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Peace out. <laughs>